So in the last video, we had gone through just how to make a supply and demand graph, sort of like the one we saw right here. And what I want to get into with this video is uh, some of the shapes that we can add to this graph. Because oftentimes in economics, we have to add shapes for showing what area of the graph is consumer surplus, producer surplus, deadweight loss, whatever it might be. Uh, and one thing that I find is sometimes with graphs that I find online is that uh, the presence of those things kind of can be like somewhat distracting sometimes, like there's too much going on with it. Uh, and so I just kind of want to show how I subtly show those things um, to make uh, the graph visually appealing, but also to make sure we demonstrate and show where the consumer surplus and producer surplus and those other things exist. So we're going to start here with our graph. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to extend my supply and demand uh, curves all the way back to my y-axis. And so since I have that aspect ratio locked, I can just drag this all the way back right up until it touches my y-axis. Same thing with my supply curve. I'm just going to pull it back down here toward my origin. Um, and there we go. We've got it right like that. And what I want to do is I want to add in my consumer surplus triangle. And so what I'll do is I'll go up here to my uh, to this ribbon at the top, click insert shapes, and then I'm going to choose the triangle. And so as we start our triangle, it really doesn't matter how big we make it for now. Here's the triangle I got. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have a triangle that fits into that area. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that it is a triangle where in this left hand, bottom left hand corner, we have a right angle. The way we can do that with this shape is we can take this yellow box that you see at the top and you notice how you slide it along that top line. It changes the angles uh, of the triangle. And since we want our right angle in the bottom left corner, we're just going to drag it all the way over to the left corner. And now we have that triangle that looks what our consumer surplus is going to look like. Now, because we oftentimes, you know, since we associate consumer surplus with the demand, what I want to do is I want to match color to the demand curve. And the way I'm going to do that is come over here to my format shape um, pane over here to the right. And again, if that's not there, you can just right click on the shape and go to format shape or format object. And it's going to show up. I'm going to go to my solid fill and I want to pick the same blue as I've got on my line. I can click it right there. If you don't remember what it is, by the way, you can right click it um, with the format shape, um, go to color. Uh, and you can in, in Mac, I know it's more, it's choose more colors. It's a little bit different in windows, but you just click the eye drop and drag it over to my demand curve. I'm just going to click that to make sure I match it exactly to my demand curve. And it looks like we are already spot on. But another thing I want to do is I want to remove the line here. So I don't want a line um, surrounding my shape. So if you notice around shapes, there's a line and I don't want that on mine. So I'm just going to click no line right there. And then we're going to bring it here and I want to resize it so that it's the size that I need for my consumer surplus. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit here on the right um, to the center of my equilibrium. I'll bring it down right here. And there we have our consumer surplus. Now, obviously, this is a bit uh, kind of ugly and overwhelming to have on a, on a graph. And so we don't want it looking like this. So we got to kind of think about how do we want to clean this up a little bit to make it look nicer. Uh, and there's two sort of key things that I like to do. Uh, and it has to do with the transparency and uh, the, the layers or where it is in the layers of the graph. So first I want to show you what I'm talking about with transparency. I mentioned that sometimes with a consumer surplus, I feel like it's like, or whatever it might be, it's like a little overwhelming. It's too much going on. And so to make it a little more subtle, what I'd like to do is I like to take this uh, triangle and I like to change the transparency because what that does is um, it, it just kind of fades it and makes it lighter. Um, I found a number that works for me is somewhere between 70 and 80%. Um, so if I was to go like 80%, um, you can see that blue triangle right there now. And that's some people might look at that and say, hey, that's a light or a correct amount of lightness. I like, um, you know, I, I might try. I'm going to go ahead and go 75 for this one. Just get a little bit more darker in there um, now. But the one thing you might notice now with this shape is the way we have it is uh, because it is currently the top layer, because it's the most it's the like the most recently added shape um, that we've put on our graph. If you notice, you can kind of see how like it overlays on top of our equilibrium there and a little bit on our Y axis over here um, and even over on top of our demand curve. That's harder to see because they're the same color. Um, so what I like to do here is I want to send it backwards. Now, I, I want to send it backwards so that it, it sits below my equilibrium. So it sits below my demand curve. Uh, but we kind of got to be careful at how we do this and because it is actually going to still sit above our graph layer. So here's. Uh, how I like to do it. First of all, I'm going to bring this left side in so it's right up against that edge of my y-axis. Um, so you can't see it there overlapping the y-axis anymore. It also looks like I might be a little tall there because it's sticking out above my demand curve. All right. What I like to do from here, and this might be a very subtle thing for us to notice, but I like to right click this, go down to send to back. 
and I'm not going to send it backwards because so that just sends it behind one layer. I'm going to send it two back, which means by sending two back, it sends it behind every single layer. And so when I do that, if you notice these grid lines like really, really pop um, and it sits way back. And that's because these grid lines pop is because the, the graph is the top layer currently. So since I don't want it as the, um, I actually don't want it to sit behind the graph. What I'll then do from there is right click my graph and now send that all the way to the back which makes it from being the second to last layer all the way behind. Um, and so you can now see my consumer surplus th sits there. And like I said, it's a little bit more subtle um, in where it's at. I if you even want it more subtle, like I said, I I'm gonna I can change that transparency. And let's, let's say we change it to, to 80. Uh, and there you go. You have your consumer surplus there. And again, it's not overwhelming. It's not over, it's like not distracting, but it definitely does differentiate as to where that shape is. Um, another thing you can do is for labeling, there's two different ways you can do this. One, you can type right into shapes. And so the way I would do that is I could just write consumer surplus. Now the thing about doing this on the shape is it fixes in space where that's able to be. Um, like there's only one place that it's able to be. I can't move it anywhere where I want in the shape. And so the nice thing about it is, is it's stuck with the shape. The other option that you have is you could go ahead and just add a text box in here. Uh, and then I could do consumer surplus in that way. Uh, and then once again, I can you know change the color. I can change the size uh, and all those types of things. And the nice thing about this is once I have it in this way, I can then move it anywhere I want. Like if I want it a little further up or if I want it here, here, wherever, I can move it within this. The only thing you have to be careful with that is then if you want to shift or move this shape anywhere, you have to move the text box separately as well. So there we have it. We have my consumer surplus right here. Um, and let's say I want to do the same thing and make my producer surplus. What I'll do is I'm actually just going to control copy and control V this shape. Um, Cause I already know I have the correct width on it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it. And the way I do that is I'm just going to kind of line it back up to where the other one was. Uh, and I'm just going to grab this top and drag it down. Uh, and uh, layer wise, whenever I um, created that duplicate, it actually did bring this layer back to the top. So I don't have to do that same like send backwards thing. Um, but now what I want to do again is right click this one. And instead of it being blue, because we're dealing with producer surplus here, I want to change that to red. Uh, and now the red, it, it, it pops a little bit more. And so you might even want to take this one um, below 80. Maybe you uh, take this one to like 85 uh, to make it a little bit lighter. I think the, the red stands out quite a bit more. And so that's something you can do. Um, once again, though, I want to take this and send this, uh, this shape all the way to the back. And then I will once again, send my graph all the way to the back. And then I can take this. I'm going to copy where it says consumer surplus. I'm going to put it here, change that to producer surplus. I'm also going to change the color so that it matches here and boom, there we have it. We have a graph that shows our consumer surplus and our producer surplus. Now you might just have to play around a little bit with where these are like mine, I don't know, I'm super particular and it pretty well aligns dead in the middle of that dotted line. But if you don't like it, um, you know, I can I can just kind of arrow this down a little bit. Um, you got that, I got that little white gap now and so I can bring this down. Uh, so you can just kind of do it to whatever um, fits it best for you. Um, and so, you know, there we have it. We've got it shown there. Now, maybe you have a graph, though, where uh, instead we're deal dealing with just, you know, perfect equilibrium. Maybe we're dealing with a situation where we have um, some deadweight loss. And so deadweight loss makes it a little bit tougher, but a lot of the same things still apply. So I'm going to keep a lot of my same uh, labels and everything here. But let's suppose uh, that now I have a, um, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to insert a line. Let's say I have a, let's say I got a price floor that I've got right here. And uh, you know, just for me, I always make my price floors green, my price floors and price ceilings. I'm going to bring that up to 2.5. I'm also going to make it a, uh, a dotted line or a dashed line uh, just so it's not, um, so my kids don't get it confused for like a specific curve. And so then I'll come over here and I'll just, I don't know, I'll just go price floor and we'll make we're going to go ahead and label that and say, okay, well, if we have this price floor, we know things are going to be looking a little bit different for us. Um, and so if, if things are going to be looking a little bit different for us, what do we need to do? Well, first of all, this is why I like having a separate text box for consumer surplus, because when I shrink this, oops, okay. I just made a mistake. Um, if you notice that green line moved, um, if you ever run that issue, here's what happened. Uh, if you notice when I click, click my price floor here, um, I accidentally anchored the 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 price floor 
to um, part of my consumer surplus shape. And so all you got to do is kind of re uh, move it and reshape it. So that was on me. All right. So I can take this and I can resize it down to the size of that triangle that is our consumer surplus. Now, like this doesn't really fit in there that neatly, but that's the nice thing about having a separate text box. I can just shrink down where it says consumer surplus a little bit and I can reposition it in the place I want to. Now, from there, um, I need to have a different look in producer surplus. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but uh, I'm going to remove this line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, shrink down this one to right here um, but we also got to add in a little bit more producer surplus as well and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to add another shape and this time we're going to take the shape and we're going to make it a rectangle and so i'm going to take a rectangle i'm going to do some of those same things that i had done before since this is going to be part of the producer surplus i'm going to make it red i'm going to remove that line i'm going to make this transparency match the other one which was 85 percent um, and I'm going to move this into position right there. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit just because it has like your kind of position in this. It, like this is one of those things you just got to kind of eyeball to get right. Um, another thing you could do is you could look here and say, all right, well, I know the width of this is 1.23. So I want to get this to match with 1.23. Um, and I did pretty, pretty well there. Um, and so you just kind of got to eyeball this, maybe arrow it up and down until you get to a place where you're like, hey, look, that now looks like one kind of continuous shape for my producer surplus there. Um, if I want to move it up a little bit to match up, we got it there. And now, um, as I take this, bring this down as my new quantity that is going to be sold within this economy, I've got my dead weight loss triangle, but we're just going to treat this one like any other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, insert shape. I've got a triangle. And again, I'm going to make my triangle look like this. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, actually, because that'll better fit what we're looking for here. Um, I know like I've seen, I don't know if there's no like perfect way to perfect color of dead weight loss. Um, some people do it in yellow. I've seen, um, I, I've seen, I do it in gray just because dead weight loss I like to associate as like, you know, something gross and not happy. Uh, and so that's why I always do it in gray. So um, as we reposition this at our equilibrium, drag this back a little bit, we've got this shape. I'm going to get, again, like I said, I'm going to make it gray. Um, I'm probably going to choose this fourth gray down here. Um, and I'm also going to change the transparency to like a, a 70%. Um, and then once again, I'm going to right click it. I'm going to send it to the back and then I'm going to send my graph to the back. And now I've got this gray triangle here that I'm going to um, get a text box for. And I'm going to put that text box right there. I'm going to label this as DWL. I'm also going to change the text color there and make that gray. And there you have it. Now we have a graph that shows not only producer surplus, consumer surplus, but also that dead weight loss that results from a price floor. And again, like I said, there's no perfect way to do this. Um, this is just kind of the stuff that I like to do to like to, to, to make it look um, a little less distracting. Uh, I don't like shapes completely filled in. Um, uh, I don't like tons of distracting colors. I like to keep the colors on the graph to a minimum. I obviously want to differentiate, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. And so this is kind of the way that I have found to do that. The transparency uh, is what's really helped with the colors to help them associate like producer surplus with the supply and consumer surplus with the demand. Um, but at the same time, um, you, know, you know, sending those shapes to the back and, and using the transparency to make them a little bit less distracting.